Hello and thank you for coming to check this out. So this is going to be a short guide to show you how to do this rise and fall animation just using motion behaviors. We are going to cover how to set it up and then how to get little groups of objects working and then also how to do it with the sequence text and sequence replicator. So there's a link in the description for this project file um, and also the Photoshop file with the little penguins and the background image. So if you want to get that set up and follow along, that's available for you to download. Okay, let's get into it. This is the basic animation here. You can see in the layers panel, there's just two parameter behaviors driving it. It's the exponential and the logarithmic, and they're acting on the y-axis. Right, I have another one ready to show you how to set it up, so I'll just zoom back. If you can't see uh, outside of your canvas area, come here to your menu and choose Show Full View Area. Right, so I'll select this circle, and on the y-axis I'm going to put the logarithmic behavior. And I'll set an end value, and I'll keep my eye out over here. I'll move my play here to one second, and now I'm going to use this end offset slider here to bring the end position to one second. And that's the first part. So the logarithmic parameter behavior gives us the nice rush, quick entry, and then a long, slow ease into its final position. So for the second part of the animation, I'll keep my playhead at one second and I'll come back to the y-axis and add that exponential parameter behavior. Then I'll keep my eyes on this side and set the end value into a negative. So you can see over here the exponential curve is taking shape. Right, and then I'm going to use that end offset to bring it forward to meet the playhead at about one second. And that's it. So from here you can adjust things to uh, get it looking the way you like, but uh, what we have is, for now, the animation up, slowing down, and there's no visible uh, period where it stops rising and waits and then starts falling. It just drops straight into the fall. So that's the first step. Now let's look at how we can get groups of it working together. Here's a group working together, and I just want to point out a few tips to save you time when you're working with this animation. So first of all, uh, down in the timeline, I have just staggered them. So just by having them come in a few frames after the one before it, you can get quite a nice uh, looking effect. I think it sells the idea of what the animation's about. And I didn't have to come in and adjust these at all. These are all identical parameters here. I haven't had to adjust them to make the, anything appear different. The other tip I want to leave you with is, you can see that right here's the blue one in the middle, here's the pink one on the left, and here's the orange one on the right. 
they are all sitting in their own group. And the reason for that is that when you want to play around with how it looks, um, you can do it quickly just by grabbing a group. And so let's say I want to make the pink one uh, come in lower. I can just bring the group down and that's going to instantly let me see what it would look like. And I'd be happy just to leave it like that. See, I can do that, change things around just by moving the groups around rather than having to come in and adjust the actual parameter behaviors themselves. The reason you would want to adjust the actual behavior is to create maybe a longer hang with the animation going up and down. So I'm going to turn off the pink and the orange and we'll just leave the blue. So it's rising and falling. So if I want to create uh, a longer hang then I'm going to do that by changing the animation that's bringing it down. That's the exponential. I'm just going to drop the exponential under the logarithmic in the timeline. And then I want to pay attention to the keyframe editor here, to this side of it here. So I could grab the exponential parameter behavior here, and I'm just going to move that end offset further away which will give it more time in the air and a slower animation coming down. Just like that, really quick and easy. Uh, right, so next we'll have a look at how easy it is to just transfer the behaviors you set up onto other objects. I have the three penguins here from the Photoshop file and each one is in its own group. So to set them up with the parameter behavior, I'm just going to grab the behaviors from the blue circle, shift select and I will option drag to apply them to the center penguin. And now I'll just command C and paste to the left and right one, just to show you how easy it is to transfer behaviors to a new object. So the animations are kicking in, uh, but now I want to organize them. So I'll just pull back and I'm going to grab, move the playhead back and I'll grab the right one in its group and move it in and down a bit and then the left one here in its group, move it down to about here. Now we're going to stagger them, like I mentioned before. I'll bring the playhead to three frames and select the left and use shift left bracket to offset the endpoint. Then I'll bring the playhead five frames forward and select the right one and shift left bracket to offset it. Right, so you can see they're all jumping a bit too high, so I don't need to adjust the actual parameter behaviors. I'm just going to grab each group. And move them down. So I want to base it on one second where around about here, okay, and grab the right one, drag them down and grab the left one too, and drag them down. Let's see how that looks. not a bad start. So let's have a look at what I did with the penguins before we move on to the replicator and sequence text. I'll just turn this group on here. 
and I'll turn everything else off. So there's our, our title. So with these penguins here, I think I called them group two. Yeah, group two. I've just added a spin behavior to them. give them some rotation. Their, the spin behaviors are all set to something a little different. And with the third group for this penguin here, I came into the logarithmic behavior and increased it and gave these guys a little different spin. So these chaps here, the last guys, all coming up in a row, it was really quick and easy to do. Really, really fast and easy to do. Uh, if we come into the timeline, okay, here they are. You see, I just did one and the rest are just staggered in the timeline to come in a few frames after the other one. It took me about a couple of minutes to stagger them and place them all. But that leads us on to another thing that we can do, and that is to get this kind of result using a sequence replicator, and that's what we'll look at next. It's really simple to get those parameter behaviors working on a replicator, Let's have a quick look at how to set that up. So I have a replicator ready to go. It's in a line with 18 points. First of all, I will add sequence replicator. And I'll bring the playhead to two seconds. And I'm using O on my keyboard to trim it out there. Then I'm going to add position to the sequence replicator. So now we have access to the y-axis to work on, but first I have to set this option here to from keyframes. Right, so now we can carry on pretty much as before. I'm going to add the first behavior here, logarithmic. And before we start, I'll just move my playhead to one second to help me judge things and increase the spread a bit. So I'll set an end value and use the end offset to drag the end condition back to meet the playhead. There it is. Now I will add the exponential I'll set that end value you can see it taking shape over here. I'm going to set it so that it brings them down further than they started. And I'll drag that end condition to meet the playhead at two seconds. Let's drag the replicator down. All right, not too bad. So you can influence the look of this animation by coming in and playing with the, where are we? Here's the replicator, here's the sequence replicator. You can come in and play with the spread. You can adjust the speed, so if I, let's see what ease in out does. Oh yeah, quite a distinct result there. 
uh, decelerate. And of course you can come into the replicator and adjust the origin. So there you go, that's really quick and simple to get that rise and fall animation working through a replicator. Let's finish up with titles. We just had a look at how to apply the parameter behaviors to a replicator by sequencing and with the titles it's exactly the same steps uh, but rather than use sequence replicator we use sequence text so in this menu here text animation there it is there sequence text and from there you would just follow exactly the same steps that we did with sequence replicator you can see in the layers panel everything is set up identical to what we did before. So that is that. Uh, I tried to keep this as short as possible, but I think still I might have dragged on a bit. Uh, I hope that this has been useful and thanks for watching.